Hey, I'm Srini, the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. If you've been a longtime Mem user, you've probably noticed that they have made some pretty big changes with the new Mem interface. There are a couple of features that have gone away, and in this video, what I'm gonna show you is a couple of workarounds to replace the features that are gone, as well as show you how to navigate the new interface for maximizing your productivity and making sure that you're able to use Mem to its fullest capacity the same way you were before. Now, let's get to the tutorial. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over MEM's new interface and talk a little bit about some of the features that have been removed and give you some potential workarounds for actually bringing those features back if you are really dependent on them or you use them a lot. So for those of you who haven't done it yet, if you haven't enabled MEM's new interface, the way that you do that is by going over to your settings here. And you can see here it says try the new user experience. And all you have to do is enable that by just moving that button to the right and then it will be enabled. So you'll see here, if we go to our home, it's a lot more simplified, but some of the features that you're probably used to are gone. A couple of things that are gonna be gone as a result of this new update are things like templates, things like tasks and calendar. But if you look here in sources, you'll see that there is a plan to bring the calendar feature back, but there is a temporary workaround for that, which I will show you here. So before we go into the new interface, let's actually go through some of the workarounds for how you're going to deal with all this stuff. So the first thing that you want to figure out a workaround for is templates. If you're somebody like me who uses a lot of templates, you might have a fairly extensive template library. In fact, uh, you'll see here that in the new mem, templates aren't even there as an option, but there is a workaround for this. So the way that you can do this is by doing something like this, where you just create a template and then you make it part of a collection that goes into your templates collection. And the cool thing about this is that you can still apply this new project template to things like asking MemChat to plan a project. So this way you just have this sort of one master mem and that you don't really touch, or you can just copy and paste it and replicate it. So the other thing that might be missing for some of the people who are used to using templates are the, the keyboard shortcuts that we use, like very short ones, like I had a template for literature notes. And one way around that is to use a, a text expander tool, something like Raycast or text expander, which allows you to replicate these sort of smaller templates that where you just have a little bit of text, but you are using them pretty repetitively. So that's a basic workaround for how you replace templates. Now, I personally went back and forth with tasks and mem and never ended up really using them, but there are a couple of ways that you can work around the issue of tasks. The one thing that used to be really nice that I did like about tasks was the fact that you could see all the tasks that were aligned to a particular project from the tasks view, but now that is gone. So there are a couple of ways to do this. The first option is to just create a mem with all of your tasks. So you could call it master task list or something like that. And so what we would do is say new mem master task list, most important task. And then we could just put all our tasks for every day in there. The nice thing is that you still have the task capability inside of mem as we did before. So I could just say task one, task two, task three. So that's one option is to just have a master task list. And one of the things you could do is you could just add it to your favorites. And then that just becomes the place where you plan out your day and have all your tasks. The alternative is to basically create uh, tasks with collections. And then what we could do is we could take this most important task for today and we could add it to a tasks collection and give it a status. So for example, if we wanted to, we could say, okay, we're going to create a collection called tasks. And then we could say urgent uh, or important or whatever it is. So we could basically replicate an Eisenhower matrix inside of mem if we wanted to do that. The alternative of course, is to use another task management tool. Like I said, I personally never was a big fan of using tasks in mem. So I use a very simple to-do list app called slash, which just displays your task that you're currently working on, on your screen. And then you just check it off when you're done. So that's how we deal with the workaround for tasks. Now, the big one that I think is a bit more challenging is the inbox. I absolutely love the inbox. I thought it was one of the most important things because it became the place where I processed information. It gave me a way to see what I needed to focus on for that particular day. But in the same way that we did with the tasks here, we can actually, for example, let's say we wanted to basically have this go to the inbox. We could create an inbox collection 
And within that inbox collection, we could just add things that we are going to process. And so basically that would allow you to have the inbox be a place where you can process and manage information. So the thing that I think that I don't particularly love is the fact that in the inbox, things were always bolded. And if there was a workaround for that, that would be great. But right now I don't actually see one. So that's one way to get around this issue of tasks and templates being gone. And you, just by using tags. So tags can effectively replace a lot of the functionality that we had before. And in a lot of ways, it actually does become simpler. But if there are things you didn't love about the way that tags or collections work, this may not be ideal. But I, I think it's a pretty effective workaround that allows you to replicate some of the same functionality. So for example, when you're forwarding an email from your email to Mem, you could just write the tag inbox in there and it'll then go into your inbox collection. And so then instead of having a specific inbox in the interface, you just have a collection where you're able to process all of the different notes. So that's a pretty solid workaround, I think, for dealing with this. And then finally, the thing that you'll see is in the past, you would see a list of all your calendar events here on the sidebar, and that actually is gone. And as I noted here, if you go here, you'll see that syncing your calendar is going to be available at some point again. But if it's not right now and it's something that you use a lot, for example, I every time I have an interview scheduled, I actually end up having memes for those interviews for my podcast. And so I thought, okay, there's got to be a, a way to get around this. And there is, which is actually fairly simple. If you're somebody who likes having memes created automatically for the various events on your calendar, the way to do that is to go to Zapier and you can use uh, any number of calendar tools. In this case, we're just going to use Google Calendar as an example. You connect your Google Calendar account. So I'm just going to connect this one here. So there you can see it's just expired. So I'm going to go ahead and, and reconnect this really quick. And once this is reconnected, then what we can do is we can actually see what events are on the calendar. So you're going to choose whatever calendar it is that you're using here as your trigger. And anytime a new event is added to that calendar, then what will, will happen is that you will basically get a thing here with the record. So then what we're going to do is we're going to select this record. And from that record, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new mem. And it's really up to you as to what information you want to pull into here from that calendar record. And you can see here that I have mem connected to about 32 different zaps that I use. If you do this right, it actually can be really valuable. And there are a lot of different ways that you can use Zapier and mem together. You can see here it's giving me a little trouble connecting. So I probably need to connect the accounts. So now it's connected. If we do this, then what we can do is we can say, okay, what's the content you want to have? And so you can see here I have an event name. So that could just be the content. And when you're actually entering stuff into here, what I like to do is use a hashtag because I like to give everything that is a note uh, a title. And so I could add any other information here that I wanted to below. And so if I wanted to, what I could just do is say event and we could create an events collection or we could create a ca calendar collection. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the attendees. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it create a new mem. So this way, anytime you have a new event on your calendar, it'll bring in that content and it will create a mem from that. And you'll see here that now we have just sent a mem to uh, mem. And if we go back here, we'll probably see it show up here in just a second, either in added by me. And there it is. You can see that on my event with Kevin is there. I didn't bring in all the details about the date and all that other stuff, but I have event name. And so that's one workaround for the calendar issue. Now let's actually go into the new interface and talk a little bit about how we actually navigate this. So as you'll see here, the new mem interface has actually been simplified quite a bit. So I want to go through the interface and explain how everything works in the new interface. So this is your home screen and here you'll basically see what you would see when you normally log into mem. You have all the different navigation components like home collection, favorites, chat and search. And here you'll actually see all of your notes and a couple of different lenses through which you can filter those notes. So one of the things that used to happen is you would see recently viewed notes. But the nice thing about this is that instead of having to specifically view those recently viewed notes, 
I, if, for example, I go into this note right here, then if I go back, you'll see here that it actually comes to the very top as the note that I most recently viewed, which is pretty nice without you having to specifically say that this was something that you viewed recently. The other thing that you can do is you can look at notes that were added by you, whether they were forwarded or anything else. So pretty much every note you add will show up here. Then you also have the shared with me notes. You can see here that this is what happens when you're collaborating on a particular mem or people are sharing things with you. And then of course you have your contains section or, or feature sections, you can specify things like this. So for example, if I wanted to narrow this list down to notes that have quotes inside of them, it will actually bring me notes that actually have the quote block inside of them. So you've got a lot of the same sort of features here that basically are there. So you can see here that you also have stuff that has links in them. And then finally, we have the ability to access our collections from right here. So we can say, okay, just show me the notes that are, for example, the blog. So now that I'm going through this, a lot of the choices that the MEM team made actually make sense because this does actually simplify things quite a bit. So for example, let's say I knew that today was the day that I wanted to focus entirely on the Unmistakable Creative blog. I could just work with the results from this filter right here and just stick to this and nothing else. So that actually is cool in a lot of ways. Uh, as always, you have your collections and I've gone over collections before so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but you can see here that if you wanted to, you can create a new collection and all the notes that you add to a particular collection will then show up on that collection if you click that collection. So you can see here, I have a literature notes collection and this is probably one of my largest collections. So that's why it's taking a, a long time to load. So let's go and look at a smaller one. In fact, in the first part of the video, we created an, an inbox collection and you can see here that I have the other note here titled my most important task for today, which was part of that collection. Now, the other thing we have is our favorites and I tend to use favorites really as my para structure. So projects, areas, resources, all that ends up going here. And I think that's a, a good way to use favorites just because of the fact that you don't want a ton of things in your favorites. Usually when I use favorites is because they're memes that I know that I access pretty much on a regular basis. So for example, my master editorial calendar, which has all the content that I'm currently working on. And so that's one nice thing. My favorites chat, of course, has pretty much stayed the same. In fact, chat is really just the center of this. And you can see here that I actually was having chat help me to write the outline for this video as I was working on it. And then finally, you have search, which is basically exactly what it was before. So in this case, maybe I'll do a search for artificial intelligence and see what we've got. And then again, we get a lot of the same filtering features. So you can see right now, it's not showing me the online search results. So I'm just going to have it show those. And again, we can see who edited this. We can see if it contains anything or whether it was captured via imports or emails, whether it has links or it was created. And then we can also look at a sort, which gives us the ability to sort these notes by last modified, last created, or most relevant to whatever the search criteria is. And usually the search criteria is based on whatever you searched for. So that's basically what will come up to the top. But overall, even though I think that there's been uh, a lot of strong opinions about these changes. As I'm going through this video, it's starting to suddenly make a lot more sense. I personally didn't love the fact that they got rid of the inbox and templates because those were things that I used regularly. But as you can see here, this is a, a pretty drastically simplified interface that makes life uh, a lot easier once you get used to it. It does take some getting used to, and you still have a lot of the same abilities you did before. For example, now they call this sources, so you can still import notes from other tools. You can still send things via text message. And from what we're looking at here, it looks like soon we'll be able to search the content of our emails directly from within MEM. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't signed up yet, check out the Maximize Your Output newsletter. Every week we share one of these tutorials along with an accompanying blog post and other ideas that we don't share anywhere else or here on the YouTube channel. And I love hearing from you guys and let me know what your thoughts are on this new interface. I know that some people decided to abandon MEM because of this, but like I said, I think with the workarounds, you can pretty much manage things the same way you did before.